By far, one of my favorite things about working remotely, truly remotely, is that I can get out in nature. I mean, this is my front window. Actually, that's lie. That's my side window. This, right here, is my front window. Hello, my name is Brian and welcome to Overland Calling. Today we're gonna to be talking about working while you're remote. I mean, truly remote, while you're overlanding or car camping, just really getting way the heck out there. This is something I've been doing for over a year now. Gosh, probably going on almost two years. And I just, I absolutely love it. So this is a getting started guide for anybody who might be thinking about the same thing. If you can work from your house, there's a pretty good chance you can work streamside. I've made bits and pieces of this video over the past couple months, uh, just kind of as the different things popped up, I you know, made a quick clip about it. So you're gonna be seeing a lot of different views and stuff like that. I hope it's not too annoying, but I just gotta finish this thing up and we're gonna put it to edit. When I first started researching this sort of thing, I typed in Overland Office into Google. It returned absolutely nothing useful. So I started branching out, got into, you know, checking it out on YouTube with, you know, RV work from, you know, campgrounds or even dispersed. And then I also dug in a little bit into van life, but there was never anything that got me as close to overlanding and nature as I really wanted to get to. Well, guess what, YouTube? Now there is. You want to get out there? Come on, let's go for a ride. Why would you want to work? while overlanding and not just take vacation like the rest of the world. I want to go out and explore way more time than I actually have vacation for. Even if I did go out like every weekend or, you know, make some long weekends with some time off and stuff like that, that is a ton of miles. You know, not only the miles I'm putting on my car, but that's lost time that I'm traveling back and forth. Why not just take a vacation and go on long overlanding trips? I don't have enough. I wish I could retire and just do this full time, but that ain't happening anytime soon. So my adventure couldn't wait for retirement. I figured a way to work work into the mix. It does take a while to really get the hang of it, be comfortable doing it. Um, a lot of people say, you know, hey, why don't you just go out and figure things out while you're out there? Well, I'll tell you right now, that's probably not the best way to do it. You want to start small. Start by going out in your backyard and just, you know, testing your cell phone out. See if you can use it a hot, as a hot spot or something like that. Seeing a, exactly what you need in a nice, safe environment. So that's my best advice. Start small work your way up and then you know eventually this will be your office so what kind of stuff do you need to get started doing some crazy working from the road adventure well it's going to be different for everyone um, number one you need a job that you can either travel or that you work remotely so you can travel around and not be at home number two it really depends on your job. The easiest way for me to kind of figure out exactly what I needed to bring with me is I just spent a week paying attention to everything that I use throughout that week when I'm working from home. Everybody's gonna have their own work needs. For me, it's a cell phone, computer, a monitor. He's a wireless speaker. I also like to play music sometimes. Keyboard, mouse, nice big mouse pad, and a way to power everything an ergonomic working area because I sit here a lot. Comfy chair, table that's the right height. If you can work with your laptop in your lap, then hey, that's all you need. You don't need all this fancy stuff. But figure out what you need at home because what you need at home is pretty much what you need on the road. There's not a whole lot that changes. If you've ever tried to look at your laptop in full sun, it's dang near impossible to see anything. So for me, 
I needed a room that could give me shade from the sun. Not just when it's coming down from the top, but also in the mornings and afternoons, whenever it's coming in through the sides. I need some way to block that out so that I can see my computer screen. I also do a fair amount of work in the evenings. And if you've ever tried to work on a computer outside in the evenings, you'll notice that those kamikaze bugs will just find you and be relentlessly pursuing you. So I got something that I could screen in and protect myself from the bugs and still give me a pretty nice view. How do you find free dispersed camping? Well, there's a couple ways. I'm gonna start with the very best one. Get out there and explore. This spot is one I just lucked into and it's a beaut. It is Creekside and it's shaded right now, but that right there is a swimming hole. You've got your own personal pool. And this thing is huge. I mean, I could probably fit, I don't know, 10 rigs in here. Now you don't run across these spots every day, but when you do, oh man, you have to take advantage of them. Okay, so scouting's knocked out. If I'm looking for a spot that we'll call it near civilization, I use an app called The Dirt. It's a great app. It gives you directions to campsites. It shows reviews that others have done on it. And it's just easy to use. And I also use Gaia. It's really good and it's got a layer that shows me cell phone reception. So if I'm looking for a place to work, then I can usually find it. Here's a quick tip on cell phone communications. If you can find a place to camp that's close to an interstate, you're probably gonna get some of the best cell phone reception there because they usually try and keep the major thoroughfares totally covered with cell. There are a bunch of different ways that you can find campsites. Those are just the three that I use. I've never needed to go to more. Don't get me wrong, I've slept in a rest stop or two, but they're pretty few and far between. Okay, so you got a couple ways to find campsites. Next up, planning. So you're gonna do planning, research, find the places you wanna go, all that good stuff. Have a plan A and a plan B. Plan A, maps might say, you know, guy might say it's got cell phone reception, but you get there and it's not usable. Happens to me all the time. Or you could find a beautiful place like this, but guess what? Starlink's almost certainly not gonna work here. There's way too many trees. So have a plan A and a plan B. And just the ability to be absolutely flexible. You never know what you're gonna run into out here. You can have two perfectly sound plans that just get shot to heck. If you run across a really great site and you think you're gonna do you know, a day of work and a day of exploring, and it just doesn't happen. You find a beauty of a spot like this and you just squat for a full day. Be flexible and work with your surroundings and your experiences. Wanna work from the road? Here's a question, do you tell your boss? Well, I can't answer that one for you. That's gonna be a personal decision that you've gotta judge for yourself. So if you tell your boss that you wanna work out of a RV or a travel trailer and work remotely, well, then they're like, well, okay. Tell your boss you wanna work out of a van on the road and they'll be like well okay if you tell your boss you want to load your stuff up in a tent and camp on the top of a mountain for your work week they're going to think you've lost your freaking mind so did the trial week and you know what it worked just fine because guess what it was not the first time that i'd actually worked remote i cheated i did a trial run before my actual boss run. I'd already gone out in my backyard. I'd already tested to make sure that, you know, all my stuff was gonna work and everything was looking pretty good. Then I went out a little more remote and tried that and figured out more stuff and I learned more stuff. So by the time it was actually time for me to go and do my remote work, I'd already figured out a lot of the pitfalls and all the questions that he had, I already had the answers to. He thought that I just thought everything through very well, 
when in all actuality, I'd already had that trial and error phase. So I told my boss and the rest is history. That's one of the things I like about working from the trail. You can just kind of pack up and you're instantly on vacation, whether it's you know an actual vacation or just a weekend or whatever, but you're there. There is no commute. You already did that commute. So is it worth it? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's worth it. Is it for everyone? No, maybe not. But if you're watching overlanding videos and working from the road videos, it may just be for you. Don't be afraid. Get out there. Practice someplace safe. There's no reason to lose your job over this. But you can have your cake and eat it too. So what'd you do for your lunch break today? For me, I made a quick sandwich and came out here for some fun. This puts the break in lunch. One of my favorite things about working while I'm truly remote is that come five o'clock, turn my computer off and I'm immediately camping. Has it been worth it for me? Yes, absolutely. If you have any questions, let me know. Let me know in the comments, shoot me an email if you don't want it out there public. Part of the reason I started this channel, a big part of it, is to help people have the confidence to get out there and experience the great outdoors for themselves. As always, enjoy the ride. Oh, and like, subscribe, all that good jazz.